Hi there and welcome back to 355 Code. This is the first video in our Dance Dance Revolution game tutorial. So for those of you who are not familiar, Dance Dance Revolution is basically a game where you have four arrows, like you can see here on the right, and then we'll have arrows coming up here randomly from the bottom, and when they reach the area of this top row, you need to press the appropriate key. And if you press it on time, then you get a point or you uh, it's, it's considered a victory. And if you miss it, then uh, it's a miss. So what you hear, what you have here is uh, what I set up in advance just so that we could really focus on the JavaScript and not get held up by writing out a lot of uh, HTML and uh, CSS code. And all of this uh, you'll be able to access from the description below as well as a final version of the game uh, that we've uploaded uh, to GitHub. And uh, let me just go over briefly what we have here in the HTML. So basically just um, four kind of arrow divs. And using CSS, I kind of built each one of these out to being um, kind of one of these arrow instances that you see here, including the glow and everything like that. Um, just some important things that you'll see here in the CSS that uh, we will use later on is this whole use of variables. So we have an arrow outline variable uh, that we will be using to kind of change the colors um, of the arrows much later on in our game. Um, and that's pretty much it. You can take a look at this code uh, later on. So let's get started. So what do we want to do? So basically, we need to um, create a random arrow. Um, we need to animate uh, this arrow uh, so that it flies up to this area with the other arrows. Um, we need to uh, detect key press. And we need to see if match, right? We need to see if the key that we pressed is the correct key. And then we need to have some kind of reaction, uh, maybe audio, maybe visual. OK, so today we're basically going to be focusing on the first two parts. Uh, so we're going to be creating a random arrow. And we're going to animate that arrow so that it flies up. And later on in other videos, we will talk about detecting the key press and seeing if it's a match and, uh, and so on. OK, this game is a big project. Um, so you need to kind of break it down into different parts and take each part as it comes. So let's really start with just the first thing, which will be creating an arrow. And the way we're going to do it is that we are going to actually create an entire row of arrows and only color one of them uh, in visually. So let's create a function, and we'll call this uh, create row. Okay, and basically um, a row is just a row of arrows. Okay, with four arrows. Um, and for now, I'm not going to put in any uh, arguments, but we might we might uh, we might have this function take some parameters later on. Um, and just to simplify things, I'm going to create a new row by just duplicating this row that we have already uh, created here. Technically, we could also kind of create it from scratch uh, all in JavaScript using create element, etc. But just for the sake of, you know, cutting down on lines of code and time, I'm just going to clone um, our board node. So let's take a look at the HTML and you can see that this entire div is uh, wrapped, uh, is, is has the idea of board, uh, including the arrows and everything under it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tap into that. I'm going to say const board uh, equals to uh, document dot uh, get element by ID. And then the ID is just board, as you saw just now, not door, board. Great, so we have our board. and we're going to create a clone of this board. So uh, new row is going to be equal to um, 
board dot clone node and it's very important that in here you write true okay and that basically means that we're cloning this node including all of its child uh, elements okay because we want all these arrows to be in there when we clone it um, and the next thing that we're going to want to do is to uh, let's just put it in now just so we don't forget at the end at the end we're going to be appending this new row to something that I call the new row generator and basically this is just an invisible uh, div that sits here on the bottom and each time we create a new row we're going to attach it to that div uh, and then animate it up so you can see here that it has the idea of new row generator so let's copy that over and I'm just going to call that uh, generator and that's going to be document dot get element by ID and I'm just going to copy uh, that in there, new row generator. And so here at the bottom, we have to remember that we're going to want to um, generator dot append new row. Okay, that's how we're going to kind of end this whole uh, this whole sequence here. And here on in the middle, we need to do uh, a lot of stuff, but Let's just call our create row function and see what happens. So you can see that basically uh, we just attached a new row here uh, on the bottom. Uh, and you just make sure you want to kind of spread out because uh, this was built to be played on desktop uh, because we're using the arrow keys. So we assume a certain screen size over here. Uh, and now basically what we're going to want to do is um, make it so that each time at random one of these arrows will be uh, visible and the others will not be visible. So uh, let's think of how we can do that. So um, what we need is basically to get a random number uh, from uh, one to from zero to to three. Okay, so let's just say um, we're going we're gonna to create something called a randomizer. And basically what this is going to uh, create a random number uh, from 0 to 3. And the way we're going to do that is using math.floor and math.random. This is the pretty standard way for uh, creating a random number. Uh, and basically here you kind of want to remember to multiply because math.random is going to give us a random number between uh, uh, one, uh, 0 and 1. So if we want a random number between 0 and 3, we're going to have to multiply this by 4. Um, and then math.floor basically turns this into a, uh, a round number. Um, and now um, we are going to change the attributes of these um, these arrows using a for loop okay so we're gonna want to run through this uh, four times so let's say four uh, let i equals zero and as long as i is smaller than four i plus plus and let's think what we're going to want to do uh, in this uh, for loop. So basically what we're going to want to do is we are going to want to uh, style these rows. Okay, so for example, we're going to say uh, new row dot uh, children. Okay, because these, uh, these arrows are direct children of the um, of our uh, our new row node because you could see here that in the original board we have um, you know we have our board uh, wrapper and then inside we have an arrow wrapper uh, and basically we are going to be applying it to these uh, arrow wrappers um, and so we have new row children, and children uh, returns an array, uh, or an array-like um, object. So 
we are going to need to use I. Okay, so now each time we're going through the loop, we're tapping into one of the four children um, of the board. Sorry, of the new row. And then we're going to want to tap into their style. And we're going to use something called set property. Because basically what we're going to want to do is to uh, change the value of those CSS variables that I showed you earlier. So let's say, uh, let's say we set the property um, of arrow outline. Okay, so let's copy over here arrow outline. And let's say I change that to uh, blue. Okay, I'm doing this just as an example, uh, just so you can see kind of, um, just so you can see what happens when this for loop runs. So let's run the code. And you can see that now our row on the bottom has four um, blue arrows, okay? Because I basically looped through these and I said, okay, change each of these to blue. Um, but we don't want to change them all to blue. We only want to change one to blue. So basically, uh, let's say if i is equal to our randomizer, then change it into blue. Okay? And if not, it won't change it into blue. So let's see what happens now we run our code. So you can see all the arrows are white except for one which is blue. And if I run this code again and again, you'll see that this arrow changes each time. Okay? So this is already pretty much halfway there. But the last thing that we want to do is we want to kind of uh, remove the color from the rest of the arrows. Uh, because it would be kind of confusing if you had a full row of arrows coming up and only one of them was colored. We only just want to show this colored arrow. So basically, uh, let's add an else statement here. Okay, so if... Um, if it's uh, not our, um, you know, our arrow, uh, that our specific arrow that we're going to be using for the game, then what we're going to do is we're just going to change it to transparent. And I'm going to do this for the arrow outline, and I'm going to do the same thing for um, for what we have here, which is the arrow color itself. And now let's try running our code again. And you can see here that now we just have one single arrow and each time it changes. Okay, so that's great. We have our new row. And uh, basically what we need to do now is animate that row. So let's create a new function and we'll call it um, animate row. And let's think a bit about what we uh, want this to do. So in order to animate, we are going to be using um, JavaScript uh, animation, which basically uh, is done by setting um, options. And we're going to want to set uh, keyframes. And then we are going to uh, want we want to animate okay and in this dot animate uh, we're gonna pass our option and our keyframes so if you're not familiar with this at all I do recommend checking out the documentation just so you see how options is supposed to be built how keyframes is supposed to be built uh, and we're gonna do it now together um, so options is basically like how you want the animation to change and it's an array of objects. So um, let's say I want to, what we want to do is transform, right? Because we want our row to move along the y-axis. So that's transform. And uh, translate y. Right? This is exactly what we would use, let's say, in CSS if we were, wanted to change the... Uh, location of an uh, an element, 
Uh, and let's just tell it for now, let's say, minus uh, 2,000 pixels. Okay, we might change this later on. But let's just get ourselves started. And keyframes, we basically uh, want to give it information about, um, you know, let's say the duration of our animation. And we're also going to want to say, you know, how many iterations, like do we want it to repeat over and over again, or we want it to just happen once and then disappear, etc. Uh, so let's say for duration, let's just say 2,000, uh, everything here is, is measured in milliseconds, just like if you're familiar with uh, set, um, you know, set interval, set timer, etc. And for iterations, I'm just going to put infinity. Uh, and you can see here that this keyframes is an object. Okay, so this was a, an object in an array, and this is a uh, and let's this here has to be options. And now let's think for a second. Okay, what is it that we want to animate? So basically, we want to animate a row. Okay, and this row we're going to need to pass in uh, as a parameter. And down here we're going to call row dot animate. Okay, and this row needs to be an element. So basically, we can call that uh, right here, right after, um, and that's going to be animate row, and we're going to pass in new row. Okay, so let's check out our code. Run, and you can see that basically it creates an arrow and it animates up. But the, an the arrows only uh, change to different kinds of arrows each time I uh, press run. Okay, so that's not what we want to happen. We want this uh, new row function to be um, operating um, at a certain interval. So like every one second we add a new row or every uh, three seconds we add a new row. Okay, and then we'll have lots of different random arrows flying up. Uh, but as you can see, we're about, I would say 30 to 35 percent of the way in creating our game. Um, let's just recap what we did. So we created a new row with a random arrow and we have created the animation for that uh, row as the arrow uh, to make the arrow fly up and pass through the rest of our arrows. And next time we'll be diving in a little bit more about how to kind of create that uh, repetition uh, where it's randomly giving us different arrows and then we'll move on to how to detect a key press and how to see if it matches etc. So uh, if you like this video please don't forget to like and subscribe and I hope to see you next time.